uh, as is recommended, but you know, it's all up to you. Um, I will call this meeting of the Economic Development Committee to order for Thursday, March 19, 2020. Um, I'm going to ask tonight two uh, members of uh, the committee, uh, well, Ms. Rasmussen uh, might not be with us or she might be joining us later as she has a conflict with work right now. Um, but I would ask everybody in the committee to uh, do whatever we can to move this along quickly, uh, to deal with our business and move on um, so that we don't spend too long of a time here. Uh, also, as far as closed session goes, it is an option, but it's not a necessity. So we'll, we'll see what we can deal with in open session and determine if we have to go to close for any purpose. First item on the agenda, approval of the minutes from our 3-3 three, three meeting of this year. Do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Peckham, do I have a second? Mr. Martins, anything in there untoward? Seeing nothing, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And none are opposed. Thank you. Number two, discussion and possible action on the acquisition of county-owned foreclosed property at 1407 North 2nd Street. That's a property I've had my eyes on for several years now. And yes. Nice to see it might, it's on the agenda. Yep. In your packet, you'll see we've included some information. We've expressed interest to the county, and we've worked co cooperatively with the county to take uh, to move this property through the foreclosure process. So we'd um, we recommend. Uh, acquiring this property. We have a variety of uh, pots that could be used to acquire it, including TIF resources in that area because it is in the TIF district or uh, blight resources. And some of it will depend how we see that property being um, you know, reused in the future. So I, I will add that it is immediately next door to immediately north of the first Live It Up Wausau uh, residence. That's correct, yeah. And, you know, the, for the sake of the people living there, it sure would be nice to have this eyesore out of the neighborhood. Uh, they certainly deserve, you know, they keep their house up very nicely, and, uh, and this mess is right next door. And it is, a, in the near downtown area, it is a good development opportunity for who knows who. But, uh, so I'm, I'm happy to see it on the agenda. Anything from the, the committee? Mr. Peckham. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering if there are any uh, financial encumbrances or obligations that we would be taking on uh, if we did pursue this property. Yep. So we would. Um, the so the county has included an appraisal of ten thousand dollars. Usually, that's um, a, a starting point for discussions um, on purchasing it, and then there's a $12,000 delinquent utility bill that the county has squared up that if we acquire it, we would likely, um, we would likely square that up as well. So, you know, potentially a 22,000 or so cost to acquire it. <clears throat> Mr. Gisselman. Well, we, we do know what we're going to do with it because it is on the plan for the blinker development on Second Street, so yeah. we, you just haven't approved that yet. So, well, yeah. I know, but sure. I'm saying that that's part of the plan, and I'm sure that that plan will be approved. Mm -hmm. So basically, that that development, as we know it, north of DeKalb, will have the same features as that one block or that one lot on the southeast side of Second Street and DeKalb. You know, I can talk about that a little bit later, but I'm just saying that this will be there and it's going to be a two unit, the potential of it as being a two unit development on that one lot. I have issues with that, but that's part of the discussion with regard to the blinker development. But basically, we do know what we're going to be doing with that lot. And I'm sure the cost for for the raising of it and all will also be shouldered by by the city once we acquire it. So, I mean, but I think we know the most likely the future of that of that lot when once we decide that we're going to indeed acquire it. You know, I wouldn't put the cart before the horse as far as the blinker um, project, proposed project goes because I, we do have to have some discussion on that as well and and who knows how that's going to turn out. So, uh, so let's, uh, you know, this property, as, as it stands right now, even if, if Blinker, you know, didn't exist in, in, you know, the future of that neighborhood, uh, I still uh, would support uh, acquiring it because I find it uh, highly developable, developable 
and uh, and it's a priority to, uh, priority to get that that blighted property off. Just just so that you know, what I did say, I'm also agreeing with you. I think mm -hmm. that that property has been um, needed work for a long time. Talking to the neighbors over there, and I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the assessment uh, uh, basically stated that its its potential you know future value is as a vacant <laughs> property. Because it's to, to try to fix it in any way, shape, or form would just be financially uh, crazy. Uh, yes, Mr. Peckham. I would move to uh, direct staff to pursue the uh, negotiation with the county uh, with the end result, hopefully, being acquisition of that property. Thank you. Do I have a second from Mr. Gisselman? Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Number three, discussion and possible action on supporting the low-income housing tax credit application by Gorman Company for the renovation of the landmark apartments. So right. just another milestone in the continued effort to, um, uh, to uh, renovate the uh, Hotel Wassa and Landmark Apartments building, you know, the another positive step Gorman has um, officially reapplied to WIDA for low-income housing tax credits. Um, it's important to note, you know, the city has worked with developers on a few different low-income housing tax credit projects, um, but this will be the largest low-income housing tax credit project to date and um, will add uh, a significant amount of new restricted units in the city, you know, because they are proposing 96 units. And today the tower um, is a market rate tower, you know, building um, and rents in, in, the, in the landmark apartments are not relatively high compared to other rental properties, but they are market rate. And this will allow the building to be completely renovated using a combination of these low income housing tax credits and um, historic preservation tax credits, um, but still, uh, but hold a majority of the units in the building affordable um, for, you know, for a period of time. So um, it's certainly uh, the, the best solution. You know, we've worked with low income housing tax credits before and a variety of different projects, including uh, Savo Supply, which became Atrium Lofts, uh, the federal building, and Trolley Quarter. Although of note, you know, all three of those projects don't even equal half of the units that, um, that we're doing here at the Landmark. So that's very exciting. The CDA has already approved a loan to Gorman and Company for uh, to, uh, to again, you know, complement the mix of tax credits and financing because obviously the renovation of a historic building is expensive and, um, you know, affordable housing is by its nature not affordable. So it's uh, great to see um, many uh, partners coming together to see the project complete. Thank you. Do I have a motion from the committee? I have one from Gisselman. Second, please. Mr. Martins, thank you. Further discussion? Sure. Our, our action would just be to support uh, the application for yes. the... Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. That was good. Okay, very good. Should be a no-brainer. And that was a second? Uh, oh, we have the second over here. Okay. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And none are opposed. Thank you. Number four, discussion and possible action on the proposal received for 180 East Wausau Avenue, formerly Wausau Chemical Truck Warehouse. Yep. So we welcome a pro uh, the proposer tonight. Come on up uh, to talk about Dan Weber um, and Lynn, Lynn Kearns as well, to talk about their uh, proposal for uh, this building. As you know, we acquired this building as part of the Wausau Chemical Relocation um, and um, and we have you know, RFP'd this uh, property uh, on a rolling basis, and so we welcome their, their proposal. Excellent. Okay. Um, do you Here's your presentation. Yep. Perfect. I can advance it, though, so just tell me when you need to. Sounds good. Great. Uh, well, thank you guys all for your time and uh, listening to what we're trying to put together. 
Uh, we came up with this idea um, during the first round of uh, proposals and I wanted to see kind of where what other people were building down there and develop more of a plan. Uh, and so what we've come up with is the Wassa Barrel House and Cannery. Uh, this will be a mixed use uh, space for different businesses to help incubate or expand their current models or even help new businesses start uh, and getting their foot into the, uh, the market. Uh, first off, you have the cannery. Uh, we have a canning line that will be used to co-pack beverages for a variety of different tenants. Um, <clears throat> Timekeeper Distillery is working on our own seltzer line as well as a canned cocktail line. Uh, we believe that that'd be very beneficial to our business going forward with the industry trends. Uh, and then we reached out to Mosny Brewing Company right away. And they also uh, had ambitions of uh, using a canning line. And we, and we thought to, you know, why stop there? And we actually, in part of your packets, I believe you should see that there's uh, letters of intent and uh, support from uh, Helene's Orchard. Uh, so we'd be looking at canning um, ciders for her, working with other coffee roasters such as Condor to produce cold brews. Uh, so giving them opportunities to, to make it into different markets and be more creative. Uh, on site, we'll also have an incubator kitchen. Uh, so you'll have a lot of uh, businesses that are currently using the facility um, out in the business development area, which is a little far for a lot of people to travel. Uh, you know, being closer to downtown, I think, will really help with their foot traffic. Uh, so it'll, uh, it'll be for, you know, food trucks, uh, catering businesses, um, startups, um, people that really can, you know, need a place to, to at least incubate or start an idea or progress one. Uh, we've even talked with Thrive, uh, and they'd be interested in uh, as a tenant to help with their catering business as that's uh, an area that they see growth in. Uh, we'd like to add a winery. Um, neither of us have room for it at our own locations, but it's something that we've wanted to add for quite a while. Um, so that could help solve that space. Uh, the event space will be there to host weddings, business expos, concerts, markets, incubator events, and more. Uh, food truck stalls could be on the patio on the front side. Uh, also could be incubator kitchen tenants. Uh, and then I personally would be able to store whiskey barrels uh, in that kind of event space area as well, and that solves a lot of problems that I have. Uh, currently, um, that is the location uh, with just kind of a, a, you know, an outside, just general look of it. Uh, as it stands right now, it's pretty much a pole building. Uh, it's used to wash containers uh, and other um, totes from uh, Wasa Chemical. If you want to go to the next slide. Uh, that's kind of the floor plan. Uh, this is a moving project. Uh, we know we'll need to see where all the needs are as far as the size of the kitchen, the size of the winery. Uh, but you'll see there that uh, the bar is kind of in the center um, that will be available for not just weddings, but if we host markets. So uh, if the incubator tenants or, you know, we've uh, tried to touch base with the winter farmers market, I know that they have some things going on. Um, but it would offer an awesome opportunity to, to make more of an experience out of it. Uh, so that's kind of the 3D rendering that we've worked up with Keller is what we have in our mind. Uh, a lot of garage doors, a lot of natural light. Um, repurposing this building uh, with trying to minimize the amount of cost. Um, it's still going to be quite an undertaking, uh, but on the front there you can see the fence. Uh, we would actually like to have those be uh, windows for food trucks so people actually have a spot to uh, sit and uh, um, enjoy their meals because a lot of the times you go to a food truck and you just kind of stand there awkwardly trying to eat your food. Um, so the numbers, the budget, construction, you know, it's 990k to 1.2 million, um, included but not limited to, um, you know, the engineering conditions, water lines, asphalts. The real big costs are always going to be your utilities, HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and fire suppression. Um, so our, uh, our budget numbers come back with, you know, almost $200,000 in HVAC alone, you know, close to a hundred and some thousand dollars for fire suppression for the whole building. Um, so those are, are really, you know, some of the biggest costs are just to make sure that it's functional, functionable and to code. Um, the equipment that we'd be looking at would be, of course, the cannery. Um, the nice thing about the canner is it is mobile, so we can even take it off-site to other facilities. Um, so that will give them the opportunity in case we can't produce whatever it is they're making. Uh, a past small pasteurizer for, you know, some of the ingredients that aren't as, or products that aren't as shelf stable. 
uh, fermenters, uh, storage tanks, water filtration, and then all of the equipment to help furnish an incubator kitchen as well as the patio acting as kind of an open air dining room. Uh, again, this is really about community development. Uh, we really want to make sure that we can work with a lot of different businesses. The canning line will be mobile, uh, allows for uh, other businesses to expand. Uh, incubator kitchen will be available to anyone and then it would be a great opportunity for the, if people are using the event venue to uh, use the tenants as well, there will be an incentive. Uh, the event venue will be made available for a variety of different things. Um, you know, the, with the special events on the weekends, um, you know, it makes lasting memories on Wasses downtown, and it'll be a great significant source of cash flow to make all of this make sense. Um, food truck stalls will, uh, <clears throat> will be there, um, and the winery and barrier will, will be in use while people are actively using the, the facility. So um, I think Lynn uh, wanted to say a few things, a little bit more in depth. And we see the event space as a great opportunity for our community because there are very few spaces available for, uh, oh, sorry, pardon me. Um, I'm Lynn Kearns, Mosney Brewing Company. Um, so we see the event space as an opportunity uh, for, um, for our community because there are very few spaces available for groups and weddings of 300 people. And with the COVID um, shutdown for all of our businesses, including ours and also Dan and many, many others, there's going to be a huge pent-up demand for spaces for big weddings, and we see this as a great opportunity. Not only weddings, um, we're, our, our event space at Mosney Brewing Company is booked. I mean, we've had to cancel tons of things um, going forward during the uncertain times of this uh, virus outbreak. Um, but we were, uh, we have been booked for months for our event space, and we only have room for 100 people unless we shut the whole brewery down um, uh, and then make it available for 270 people. But we, uh, we also see it as an opportunity for business expos, uh, business meetings. Um, we, our event space is used for business meetings for uh, Green Hack and Kafka and a lot of the big business businesses in the area. So we see this event space as a as a very uh, wonderful contribution, uh, wonderful uh, uh, source for our community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you know, it's certainly uh, um, it's nice to see a, an entrepreneurial effort, uh, one that's synergistic, progressive. Um, I have a hand coming from the back of the room. Well, come on up if you know. That's Mr. Romy Wagner. Um, so, yeah, I mean, before we go on further with the uh, discussion, I, I, I want to entertain the, the committee to at least uh, look for a motion on this, and then we can continue discussion. I have a, a motion from Gisselman. Second from Mr. Peckham. Okay. Okay. Um, also, Guy Friedel is going to talk and Romy Wagner, so we're partnering with a lot of different um, resources in our community. So, Romy, cool. and Guy, please. Uh, Romy Wagner, 3500 Gulfview Drive, uh, the current facility manager of the Entrepreneurial and Education Center. This is one of the most exciting projects that has been brought uh, to the community of Wassa. I'm very proud to say that the EEC helped start both of these businesses. Some of the businesses they talked about, Condor Coffee and things, are things that were incubated right here in Wassa because the city of Wassa and the county gave a chance for entrepreneurs to get started. One part they've left out of this that I'm so excited about is the education aspect of their facility. I mean, this single line canning thing, they can bring the middle school, the high school kids down. It can be like the Krispy Kreme donut thing where they can see how ingredients become a product by going through a process. And the commercial kitchen, to be able to staff, start, and build catering systems that will not only feed their facility and the things they have, but to be able to use possibly the culinary school at the technical college as an example of how to get new entrepreneurs started. I'm excited about the, I call it, the, um, the food truck corral. Uh, the fact that there'd be places that 
our food trucks from the area could could have a permanent, semi-permanent residence. They could have a destination to come down if five people walked down from uptown, wanted lunch, they could pick from it. A venue could come in a wedding. They could have all the food trucks be part of their venues because they're there. They're all new entrepreneurial startups. Uh, the fact that besides the education, the business development side of it, starting all these new businesses to be able to have a commercial kitchen. So the clients that I've been incubating down in the um, business part, it's a great kitchen process, but they grow out of it very quickly. Yeah. To have a place downtown Wausau uh, in order to grow their business for um, the excitement of it. Uh, this, is, this is exciting from the business development side of what I have been doing for uh, the community and things for the last 10 years. I see this as a big step forward, also partnering with the um, with McDevco uh, for the education classes uh, to be able to help businesses get started. Uh, th this is cool. So um, uh, sometimes I'm overly enthusiastic, but thanks for my, this is, this is good. By the way, we're um, past graduates of Romy's class, mm -hmm. so. I just needed to put that plug in there. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Guy Friedel, and I'm here on behalf of Lynn Kearns and Mosney Brewing Company. So before I, I start telling you about why the Wassa Barrel House project will be a benefit to the city of Wassa, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in this area. I went to school at UW Marathon County campus for two years before I went to UW Madison for two more years of college and three years of law school. I came back to this area, put my roots down here where I grew up. Uh, my wife and I recently developed what used to be her parents' property into a 46-unit senior apartment complex in Weston. We learned more than a few lessons about development, and I've tried to share those with Ms. Kearns during the Mosney Brewing Company project, which I served not only as attorney but as a, also as a development consultant. So. Lynn is a bright student. She learns quickly and she has her own ideas. This project, uh, not only I, but Ms. Kearns believe will enhance the, the area that currently served as, as the location for the Wassa Chemical Building at 180 East Wassa Avenue. It will serve as an upscale event space for the Wassa area. It will also not just, it'll not be a place that is designed around drinking, although there's going to be beer and drinks there, it'll be about socialization. If you are familiar at all with craft breweries or a place like Timekeepers, they're not about people getting buzzed. They're about people socializing and conducting themselves appropriately. So this will be a space that will be a benefit to the community. Also, I want to emphasize that both Mosney Brewing Company and Timekeepers are, have established records of success. They've got a track record. They've taken what used to be older buildings and renovated and repurposed those buildings into vibrant parts of their communities. Mosney Brewing Company, for instance, was conceived of as a project that would serve not only the community's needs, but would also serve as a regional tourism destination. It has succeeded in fulfilling those objectives by providing a high quality venue that attracts people from 50 miles or more away. Customers have commented that this is the type of facility that they would only find in a much larger city. Lynn conceived of a high quality project for Mosney Brewing. She followed through and implemented that project. It's doing a significant amount of uh, redevelopment interest in Mosinee. There are some, some exciting, uh, one project that has already happened, Casa de Mescal, which is a new building, only a block away from Lynn's building. And it, uh, it had been more than 30 years before there was a new building in downtown Mosinee. And now there are two of them. And there are some other projects that I think are very close to being announced publicly, perhaps within the next 60 days. But certainly there's been more interest in development in Mosinee than there has been in many decades. We think that this project can be an important part of WASA's redevelopment effort. Now, an important part of 
being successful in a redevelopment project is building a strong team. You have to have the right people involved in the planning of this. You have to have people who have a vision. You have to have designers who can listen to that vision and translate it into a building. And you also have to have an approach where people are not afraid to spend more than just the bare minimum, that you do something that's a little nicer and more appealing to the public. That's what Lynn has done in Mosinee, and that's what she will do with this project in conjunction with Dan and his wife. And when it comes time to hire staff, uh, Mosinee Brewing Company are, and timekeepers will be hiring people who are from the local area. They'll be hiring local builders. They, uh, Lynn is a big believer in working with local businesses. She buys her supplies and services as much as possible from local people. In addition, Lynn grew up with the belief that she got from her parents that it is important to give back to the community. She has done that in a number of ways in connection with Mosney Brewing, and she's going to do the same thing with this project if it goes forward. And we think it will. So uh, funding for a project like this is not easy. When you start tearing down buildings and putting new infrastructure in, it gets to be very pricey. So to do this, it's frequently necessary to pull together sources from our funding from a number of sources. I'm sure you've been familiar with this with other projects that you've worked with. With Mosney Brewing, we had five different funding sources. The City of Mosinee, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, uh, the community, uh, let's see, the Central Wisconsin Economic Development Fund, uh, a local lender, and Ms. Kearns, the Bank of Lynn. So <laughs> it takes a concerted effort to pull all these funding sources together, but we've learned that in order for the, con the conventional lender, the main lender to become involved, they want to see and appreciate financial support, financial involvement from the local government and from the state government if possible. So all of these things are all important parts of any uh, redevelopment project. Uh, I wanted to mention to you that if you're interested in uh, checking a little bit with regards to the things that Ms. Kearns and Mosney Brewing have done, you should feel free to contact either Mayor Brent Jacobson, the mayor of the city of Mosney, or Jeff Gates, the administrator for the city of Mosney. We've worked very closely with them and with the city, and I think they can provide you with further insight as to how Lynn has conducted herself. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about this project. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, good job on everybody's part. Uh, sounds like a very you know, aggressive, progressive project to me. Uh, any questions from the uh, committee? I just maybe just wanted to summarize before we get into too many questions. You know, the, this will be, um, you know, they have basically asked for a loan in a structure of a commercial rehab loan. We don't have that amount of money in the commercial rehab pot, so we would use this, uh, we would take this from TIF resources, um, you know, in the area to provide such a loan. And, um, you know, this will be on the finance committee um, agenda as well, so you'll have another opportunity to, you know, to um, you know to think about it more and ask more questions as well before uh, before it advances. But uh, Mr. Peckham, you had your hand yes, up. Yes, I was just wondering if there are any uh, environmental or contamination issues that need to be um, yep. leaped in huge bounds. To yep. Make Great this question. Happen. No, that that building. Um, you know, we uh, performed a phase one for. Um, the main Watts Chemical Building and all the ancillary sites, and the ancillary sites were uh, determined clean. So, does not have anything else. Question, Mr. Gisselman. Considering all the variety of things, is that building and the parking big enough? Um, you evidently determined that it is. Um, from, I'm quite f a little bit familiar with that space, and but you feel it is adequate and to uh, serve all the needs that. You have planned for it. Yes, um, there is ample parking there. Uh, the lot is almost an acre large, and the building itself is about 14,300 square feet. So, for your your daily use and the incubators and the food trucks, there will be plenty of parking. Uh, when there is large events, there's actually two new parking lots that are only a block away. Um, I know that they will service the Wasa wood trucks as well. Um, but you know, I think that's a this is a great opportunity to keep those lots full year round. 
uh, not just during home games uh, for you know um, events and things like that, but I think that uh, there will be ample parking and uh, a great um, synergy with that corner and that development down there. Well, that was going to be my next is, is with regard to your neighbors, Thrive across the street as well as across the street almost the other way would be the Wisconsin mm -hmm. woodchucks. And, you know, there has to be a certain dynamic that will be going on, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, with you into the neighborhood. So, yeah. uh, Like I said, Thrive has signed a, a letter of support and intent. Uh, to actually use the resources, um, and I think that will, um, you know, this will be a great anchor uh, to to get more development to attract to that area as well, knowing that they won't be alone, that there's other people down there helping funnel foot traffic. It was just, uh, I was just going to mention along those lines, from an economic development standpoint, uh, I see it as serving as an, an additional stimulus in that area where we want to see, you know, growth, uh, redevelopment. So. Um, yeah, I, I welcome this. Uh, anything else from the committee? Ms. Kearns? I was just going to say that I just read an article about an, a similar situation in San Diego uh, where they have an incubator kitchen, which has been a tremendous asset for their community in developing new restaurants, new, new businesses in that uh, incubator kitchen, which we feel is really going to be uh, a wonderful uh, resource and partnering with, uh, you know, we're going to be reaching out to partner with McDevco and see what help they can provide, um, and also, uh, of course, Romy and um, 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 and and also, I've also spoken to Wedec. Um, they're very excited about the possibility of partnering with us as well. Very good. So. Anything else from the committee? Okay, we've had our motion and second, so. All in favor of this proposal, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None are. Well, there you go. Congratulations and, and uh, good luck on your next step. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You bet. <laughs> Number five, discussion and possible action on a proposal received from uh, Adafix Holdings, Blanker, for the proposed construction of townhomes on city-owned land at 2nd and 3rd Streets between Short and Bridge Streets and along River Drive at Fulton Street. Great. So yes, we um, we've re-agendized this because we went uh, back um, with uh, Blenker and asked them to help um, explain uh, the incentive structure and how that is used towards the project. So we um, we have these this response. Um, I can give it to anyone. I think the committee. Pat, did you get one of these? I'll give you that. Yep. Um, just so you have a have a copy of that and we, we do have extras or we can email to anyone who's interested as well. And again, we'll continue discussing this. This is also a TIF project that would be on future uh, committee meetings as well. Um, you know, we asked them uh, specifically from the guidance from staff to help justify how city incentives, um, you know, are, you know, um, fall to the bottom line of rents um, and how they um, and how they use those to adjust rents in the in or per, in the proposed project so it gives you some idea about that um, Jason was unable to attend this evening um, he is available if you wanted me to give him a call if you had specific questions um, or we can uh, you know, kind of continue to review this information and um, you know, continue to refine his proposal before bringing it back. Okay, well, I, um, you know, when we last talked about this, you know, the, uh, and in closed session, you know, our direction to staff was to go back uh, to express sort of our concerns and questions about the amount of city participation, which is uh, pretty much at the, at the maximum level line. Um, and uh, it, it, they have not budged from that, you know. Uh, we have uh, a proposal that is not just for a building or a couple of buildings, but it's for a smattering of buildings. Um, and, you know, you talk about 20% involvement in that extensive of, of a project, and I get pretty itchy. You know, we, we, try, we try to get down there to that 9 to 12% limit of our participation, if at all possible. Uh, so that remains a, a, a concern with me, and I would open it up to the 
to the committee to discuss this. I, I don't see any need to necessarily go to close unless anybody feels compelled to do so because I don't think we're in a position to act on this tonight other than to ask staff to continue relaying concerns. So anything from the committee? Mr. Peckham. Yes, uh, I have a concern that uh, it just seems like we are uh, dealing and perhaps transferring this property to the first uh, guy who walks in the door. And I think we should uh, do, and maybe Chris can fill me in on this, but it seems like a more uh, public uh, and open offering of this property to see what other interests are maybe out there um, and go from there. I think, you know, it'd be the participation that's being requested is pretty steep. Um, but I mean, those nice looking bunch of buildings and it would be great to have all that on the tax rolls and, you know, that added to the neighborhood. But I think there are questions remaining here. I mean, to be fair, the properties have been on, you know, publicly available for anybody who wanted to express interest. Um, so I don't know that there's... Uh, I had a guy contact me uh, this morning and uh, said that he was told that there would be an RFP, at least for the property uh, up on the north end there, um, and there was no RFP, so... Mr. Shock? Well, I, we can RFP it again if you like. Um, again, I, it, it seems people only come out after they, you know, have, you know, haven't inquired and yep. that someone else steps up. But I'm glad to, you know, uh, uh, you know I take your direction, of course, if you wished our, um, to leave it open longer. Um, I know, you know, the, they have also responded that they would work to change architectural elements of some of the buildings to fit with, um, you know, to fit roof lines with adjacent, uh, adjacent structures and, and um, tone down some of the modernity. But again, you know, we're just, um, you know, in the short amount of time between our last meeting and this meeting, you know, they've provided this additional information about um, the rent justification and how it falls to the bottom line of rents when incentives are used. Um, again, I think we can, there is still room to continue negotiating and we welcome the chance to do that and bring it back as a, as a, as a package, which, or, or re-RFP the site either way. Yep. I mean, this, uh, this explanation about uh, the request for participation and, and uh, tacking it on to uh, questions of rents, it, it doesn't really, uh, to me, cut the mustard as a but-for mm -hmm. uh, justification. Uh, generally, those are you know, uh, related to uh, you know, undue difficulties to get a project going. Mm -hmm. They might be infrastructure, they might be uh, geogra you know, geological, they might be you know, any number of things that that require a more extraordinary efforts mm -hmm. to get something off the ground. This is simply money to get the project done so that they can get the, the rent rates that they're you know, zeroing in on. Sure. Uh, and it's, it's, not a, a good, it's not a good argument, it, a strong argument uh, from where I sit. Yeah, from a structural, but um, you know, this isn't a blighted district. This area has traditionally not obviously has has been challenged and you know the obviously the intent of incentives is to you know to create market reasons why it can be redeveloped uh, and we did that at the first uh, two phases of their projects um, on third street and second street and those projects have been under construction um, and you know it it did involve obviously the acquisition of property and the you know kind of um, you know and clearance of structures on those sites you know to for for blight reasons so mr martin yep. uh, <clears throat> yeah thank you uh, yeah looking at the at their um, cash flow analysis here and uh, on on these on these two break evens i think there's a i'm not an accountant but i i think there might be a little bit of wiggle room here and um yeah, you know, I think you know maybe going back and sharpening the pencil a little bit more. I, I, I have a feeling we could they could probably make a you know make a little bit better either a little bit better justification or or do with less of an incentive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're glad to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And further, I mean, part of that discussion might be you know why all of these properties? Uh, why not? in a phased approach or scale it down or whatever 
to more meet your um, your resources and capabilities um, because they, from the looks of it, I mean, they would be blanketing the this part of town. You know, I sure would like to see a, a richer diversity of, uh, you know, landlords, if you will, in the area. So, uh, yeah, I, I would, uh, yes, Mr. Peckham. Yeah, just wondering uh, the status on the Thomas Street a proposal from the same company that's sure. not well, on the agenda no. today. Yeah, well, um, we are. I believe the committee had provided guidance to work on scheduling a listening session, so we'll work so that's to do that. Coming. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, kind of looking for consensus from the committee to uh, direct staff to go back and, uh, in the meantime, leave these properties open to anybody else that's interested. And uh, let's hammer out um, you know, more details and try and get us closer to where the city uh, feels more comfortable. Do I see that going around the nodding. committee? Yep, nodding, 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 nodding. We have nods all the way around. Sure, great, so, okay. No action to be taken on that, thank you. Number six, discussion and possible action on a commercial rehabilitation loan application and tax increment financing request for the renovation of the Plaza Hotel at 201 North 17th Ave. Great, so um, we've received uh, an application and proposal for the renovation of the plaza and basically the division of the current plaza lot into three different redevelopment parcels. The north parking lot being turned into a commercial site, um, the remainder of the property being potentially redeveloped into multifamily housing um, and the tower itself uh, renovated into a, a new hotel space. Um, I would like, with your permission, to call the proposer um, and to step through, you know, um, that briefly. Um, let's see, was unable to attend this evening. If you so can make that happen, I'd be fine. We'll make it quick, yeah. Is this owner a, a longtime owner or? Hello, Mr. Jay. Hi, Jay. It's Chris. Hi. Good. I'm going to put you on uh, speakerphone with the committee here. Okay. Okay. Great. Jay. Yes, I'm there. Okay. Hi. This. I'm sorry. This is Tom Neal. I'm chairing the committee, and we have uh, four committee members present. Um, you're the owner of the of the property, the sole owner. Uh, not the sole owner, but we are in the process of purchasing the partner out. Okay. Now, how, how long have you been uh, the owner or, or part owner of the property? Uh, since June of 2018. That's mm -hmm. when we purchased the property from uh, Marathon Business Properties. Okay. Very good. Um, I, I don't have right off the bat any questions myself, yeah. uh, but uh, anybody on the committee have a concern or a question yeah you can i can talk through it a little bit you know you see in the packet uh the you know presentation information um you know uh on the proposal um you know we've been working uh w with jay as he changes you know looks to buy out the partner and fundamentally change the management and operation of the hotel which has struggled for quite some time as many know um and you know, I think, um, you know, to secure the best Western brand uh, will, you know, kind of fundamentally change the way in which the hotel's operated. And it is in, you know, it is also somewhat of a city interest to uh, reduce the amount of rooms at the plaza to those that are competitive. You know, today the plaza's rooms are, there's a lot of rooms there that are not very competitive in the market, but do saturate our, um, you know, our room totals when you look uh, as total rooms in the market. And so kind of reducing that number of rooms um, with, uh, with more quality rooms also allows um, other hotels or other hotel opportunities within the market to perhaps flourish. Uh, certainly the, the rendering uh, we've seen uh, uh, is a huge facelift for that property, uh, which uh, is very welcome indeed. Uh, could you talk about uh, uh, the subdividing of the lot and other uh, proposed uses? Yeah, so the north lot would be uh, subdivided and sold separately, so it could be a future commercial use. And then the back half, which is the two-story area of the hotel, 
and the banquet and pool areas would be demolished and then um, sold to a multifamily developer to you know to add uh, more apartments in that area. Um, the hotel renovation itself, you know, we've been working to come up with what we think is a fair approach um, to uh, assisting assisting the project. So this would be a loan again on generally with the terms of the. Uh, commercial rehab program, although we don't have you know this amount of money in the commercial rehab program at the moment, so we would be using TIF resources, but it would be a very low interest loan, um, you know that uh, partners with the primary financer obviously to to redevelop it. He's also requesting one year of reverse TIF uh, to assist with you know the renovation expenses, um, you know, and. In general, I mean, it's a you know, given the amount of renovation expenses, um, you know, that level of city participation, you know, seems kind of fair. But you know, open to your questions on those. Is there uh, an agreement or, or commitment in principle on the part of the uh, 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 family residential part of this uh, going forward? Yes, correct. You know, that would be a separate you know project or separate TIF application. You know, when when that's uh, proposed, but we. We do understand that that's moving forward. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything from the committee? Actually, we had not had a motion yet, have we? I would entertain a motion. I have one from Pe uh, Peckham. Second, please. I have a second from Mr. Martins. So Mr. Gisselman. So then this is just the first phase of the, put so that there may be put more potential down the road for for the further loans and or other types of financing, TIF financing or whatever. So this is just really the beginning. Correct, yeah, I think there would be, um, obviously, um, you know, that would be tied to additional new taxable increment, new development there as well, um, which it has great potential for. It's six acres of land that's very underutilized and underassessed at the moment because it's distressed property and it's not in very good condition. So seeing the, Hotel component renovated, and the rest of it sold for redevelopment will be um, it will be a significant increase in taxable value for for the city. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the committee? And we'll we'll send this well, to finance that. as well, so. Mr. Martins. Yeah, um, just kind of looking at the um, um, proposed um, project costs and and funding. So it's um, we're looking at. Total project cost about 1.4 million, and then um, a loan. Yeah, there there is um, looks like a loan potentially secured for 1 million equity, and then so then our obligation would be another 190 thousand. That would um, thousand dollar loan would that be considered then some sort of bridge financing to get get to the um, get to where they're where they need to be or exactly yeah it'd be gap financing yeah. to assist the project and we the city would take a second position on the property um, during the loan repayment mm -hmm. would this and then the and then the TIF grant would that be up up front or no well, it, it would it's, be it's a, re, it's a reverse it's a reverse yeah yep. but, but, so that's it on, but that's but the reverse reverse TIF's going to be on the on the um, initially when to get to get the develop the project cost yep. rolling then the first okay. year um, rebated basically yeah okay okay all right anything else well from where I sit it, it looks like an attractive uh, improvement and uh, and a development opportunity for that part of town so, uh, so here, seeing no other hands up uh, all in favor of this please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed and none are opposed thank you thank and you congratulations Jay. sir yeah. Thank you very much. Number seven on our agenda, discussion and possible action on the proposal received for River Life Phase 3 mixed-use building at uh, 1200 North River Drive and associated parking in the River Life North Zone. Mr. Schock. Great. Yes. So um, to clarify here, you know, as you know, as part of the, um, you know, the River Life project, you know, the, um, the developers there, um, you know, Vigood, Odi, Riveron, you know, have um, an option to 
uh, exercise on this mixed-use parcel. This is the parcel directly behind the wharf. Um, and they've been working uh, now that they have, you know, uh, significantly advanced in the apartment project, which is rising on the river, and they've moved forward on the condo project, was, which was approved just a couple uh, weeks ago. They are now moving uh, forward with the commercial um, project as well. Um, this, you know, would be a mixed-use building with retail and office. Um, as was originally contemplated, they're going to work off and use the original plans that were devised, um, you know, for the for the project and using essentially the same foundation that's already um, partially there, um, you know, as part of that. Um, they would develop, um, you know, this commercial building um, when they reach uh, leasing of it um, and. Um, you know, for and for that, so we defined some of the terms uh, to frame it in, so they would um, I'll be able to kind of go out and you know start uh, getting pre-leasing going on, and then um, they would need some additional parking given the size of the building and their expectation of what the tenants could be. So we're uh, suggesting uh, potentially converting the lot. Uh, that was you know at the corner there into additional surface parking. Uh, we had contemplated this previously, and the Planning Commission had approved this uh, in one of the Gorman plan iterations. Um, you know to kind of uh, justify or make the mixed use building work. We know the area is uh, going to be increasingly popular. It seems appropriate. Um, that's a very small um, area. It's under half an acre, um, you know, worth of property that you know could be redeveloped. But um, obviously, this will be a, a significant building to uh, uh, to justify that amount of parking. So, you know, based on their proposal, we would use that. Uh, we would create that as as shared space parking, just like the rest of the parking lots in the in that north zone. Their incentive that they're requesting is basically a 9% of construction value. They're unsure yet what the construction value could be. Um, if it's a $10 million building, then you, know, you can um, you know, do that math. Um, and so we've capped it um, just to ensure that we understand what the maximum would be. If it's a less expensive building, then it would, it would be 9% of whatever the construction value is. Uh, committee. Yeah, could you clarify on our drawing here that lot eight would be the one that would be uh, kind of sacrificed for uh, development and converted to parking? Correct. Okay. Any thoughts on the, uh, the level of participation being requested? How does that compare to uh, the other ones as far as this 9% of the construction value? Yeah, similar, you know, the uh, condo building was um, under 10% participation as well. The initial apartment building was higher. Um, you know, um, you know, was in, we had estimated that it was around 18% or so, but, you know, again, given the, you know, amount of, of work and, um, you know, kind of, the gravity of that building being larger as well was required a lot. So I think it's, it's um, you know, from a staff perspective, it appears to be more than fair. They have um, quite a bit of foundation work that will have to be, be still completed. Um, you know, they've received the partial foundation as part of the settlement process with the past developer, um, you know, and so they have a little bit to work with, but they will still have uh, quite a, Quite a bit of work left to uh, to do to uh, you know to to get to construction. Okay, and you said they're working out the original plans. Those are the Mudrovich plans. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and they will um, you know they will ha it will have parking below the building uh, as was originally contemplated, um, but then you know this uh, additional parking in the lot to um, you know to to fill to fill the uh, commercial needs. Uh, aesthetically, uh, would it differ substantially from uh, phase one and phase two? No. Well, um, so they did include the uh, uh, just a quick picture of the original plans in the packet. Uh, and you, you probably saw that. That's the uh, marketing materials that Pfefferly has used in the past for the project, and they are continuing to represent the project. And I think it will, 
you know, it, it, it's that design, which that design was uh, originally approved by the council as a complementary design to the, you know, to the, um, you know, to the uh, residential buildings. I do anticipate uh, some concern about uh, a clone-like appearance. So, you know, that, you know, would expect that there be some discussion about making them different enough. Sure. I think it has a pyramidal roof, um, you know, and it's kind of classically Madrovich style in mm -hmm. a certain way. But uh, again, that was the design that was uh, proposed, and and those are the plans that are that are approved. And this, this, of course, would go to finance as well. Yes. Uh huh. So go to finance as well. So we could. I mean, from you know economic development standpoint, uh, we welcome you know uh, additional development down there. Uh, complimentary um, and uh, you know the mixed use is good uh, to have that aspect down there so it's not all just you know built on a residential base mm -hmm. um, uh, anything else from the committee I just want to Mr. Martins. I just want to clarify that the, the first level is supposed to be retail because it's not real because he's, he's got floor plans for the second and third but, yes um, the um, the first level is supposed to be retail okay. and that's why it's um, uh, it's a mixed-use building, you know, there'll be retail on office, and uh, they are working with retail operators right now who've expressed interest or, you know, have, um, you know, would be of interest. Um, I think it would be, obviously, we were very confident it'd be a great location for a restaurant, a coffee shop, those type of uses that would really complement the vibrancy and complement um, and serve the uh, residents who are living in the condos and in the apartments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet sort of sort of far enough away from downtown proper to uh, not have too much worries about cannibalization. Yeah, I suppose so. You know, we always contemplated the area as somewhat mixed, not heavy on retail. Um, if you recall, the original River Life planning process and visioning was really focused on ensuring that the riverfront wasn't necessarily going to cannibalize downtown, but it you know, would have a kind of appropriate neighborhood level or just local uh, level retail um, or you know, uh, restaurant type of focus. Um, that also complements WOW, which of course entertainment was a big uh, part of the original River Life uh, vi vision and um, really serves uh, all that additional housing that, you know, is obviously is progressing along right now and then coming in phase two. I'm just wondering how that lot, if lot eight is turned into parking, how that's going to service everybody considering that, wow, can you, can mostly fill up that parking mm -hmm. lot on a, on a busy evening. Yeah, that is, oh, that's one reason why they're asking for that to be additional parking, is they know that and they've recognized that. Um, you know, I think a lot of the office users will be complimentary from a uh, timing perspective. They'll be using the building during the day and not on weekends, and mm -hmm. while we'll be using it on the evening and weekends. We have been intentional with the River Life area to ensure that it's not overparked. You know, we want it to feel um, busy and um, hustle and you know like not not be not ever have the feeling that you're down there in a sea of parking or empty parking lots right yeah. because that's but it's always a difficult balance you know because there's going to be those key days when everything's happening and it's all great and you might have to walk a little bit to find parking and you know we're sensitive to that um, we also have you know, we can deploy more parking in the south zone if needed um, in future in future empty areas. Um, we also have some strategy to add more parallel parking spaces along River Drive if that needs to happen. But again, you know, we're trying to be thoughtful and not over park the area as well. I think the balance is working now. We'll continue to monitor it as time goes on. I know the last thing I want to see is, yeah, like you see, yeah, the, the sea or ocean of parking. So as, as long as that's that can, you know, uh, people like their parking, but all, but that area also is very walkable. So mm -hmm. if, if there's, if there, if a balance can be struck, it's so be it. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, from a planning perspective, if something has a uh, is, it feels very parkable. It's not walkable, and um, you know, those are diametrically opposed. Uh, forces in the world, and you can't have one without the other. Yeah, yeah. Rarely do you have them together. So we want to ensure that there's a good balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to you know, express you know, 
my appreciation for our local partners. I mean, thus far, they've uh, delivered on what they said they were going to do, and they've, uh, it's been a smooth process to this point, and so I feel pretty comfortable. Mr. Gisselman, you had your hand well, up. Just a question. At this point, we, they do, these developers do indeed need, I use the word need, uh, city, city help. It seems like you know they're moving quickly and, and with anticipation most likely of, of great, um, great rewards down the road. I'm just wondering that at this point in time they still continue to need our financial assistance. It's an astute question because you know, uh, as we pointed out, uh, you know, phase one, you know, had a certain level of, of uh, participation from the city. Phase two had a significantly lower one, and you know, partly because phase two. Uh, was a, a, a less risky proposition because it was next to, you know, an ongoing project mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. Phase three here uh, seems to me it, it might uh, merit uh, less participation if the if the job can still get done because uh, the the risk factor is, is lowered even more mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, you know viability uh, and desirability of uh, property and and uh, you know its chances for success. So. Um, it's, it's worth uh, us uh, maybe considering having staff talk to them about that. Uh, this is what they came out of the shoot with. Uh, I don't know if there's any rush for us to act tonight other than to uh, ask staff to look into that, or we can go ahead and, and move and, and let the, the Finance Committee uh, wrestle with that part. Yeah, I would be concerned about the, the, the risk level, too, Well, um, considering that we're, we're talking about commercial space and not... Um, and not uh, uh, housing, you know, housing, housing is wasa has been underdeveloped housing-wise, so it's mm -hmm. it, it's easy to see that um, that the risk has, has increased, you know, increasingly lowered with the with the condo development. But now we're talking mixed-use commercial, and um, that's a little bit more of a tenuous subject. So yeah, retail retail rents will be you know uh, challenging to justify to s some extent in an area that's less yeah. proven. But I think um, you know the real crux of the TIF request is really based on the construction uh, cost needs. You know we have to keep in mind that again these buildings are very expensive to build compared to greenfield sites or other sites. Um, the pylon foundations that they require and all the you know um, things and and we want them to build parking underneath the building which is again very expensive so you know it's very similar to phase to the phase one apartment building in its cost of construction and that has always been a challenge you know trying to ensure that they build parking underneath um, the um, underneath the building and um, build it to a relatively high standard of build quality um, you know, and work in that soil environment, you know, has been something that seems reasonable. Um, you might even mention that, you know, even, um, you know, this application has now, or, you know, is requesting less incentives and less city of participation than WOW, for example. So again, you know, as time has gone on, we have been astutely trimming back the city uh, participation levels in projects down there. Um, from a, you know, from our perspective, um, a nine percent reverse TIF. So keep in mind, this is only if it performs. Um, certainly seems more than fair, you know, to given the amount of risk and construction, you know, construction costs that the developer will undertake. I just want to be really sharp on that because you know, it's like I said, we're, um, if we're if we're going out on on that level of risk, we need to, yeah, we we need we need to know, you know. For certain that it's you know this 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 is a project that can that can move forward and we're not going to get mired into into something. Mm -hmm. so. Mr. Gisselman. Well, then, if indeed if there is risk, then what is indeed the marketability of it? Um, you know, so it's been a while since we've talked about the retail aspect or the office aspect of that of that site, but um, now I'm hearing the word risk. Uh, is this something that's going to indeed there is a markability for well yeah for they the, believe so the obviously they believe so um but they you know with the notation that they don't what they have is expressed interest they need to go sign those leases so they're going to move on the project when they have 65 percent of at least you know so we know there was interest previously 
um, you know, when the project was originally discussed, they've um, they've been able to resurrect or to you know continue the momentum on that interest. Um, and obviously, the apartments and the condos really help justify the entire environment down there, along with Wow and and other activities. So we'll, you know, but it's still a first mover in the sense of you know the the type of use that's going in there. We've always encouraged mixed use of some kind in the area. We didn't want River Life to just be in um, a residential area, um, and we didn't want it to just be, and we didn't want it to uh, have too much retail either. So. It, this is the same balance that was originally struck in the plan. Do you have Mr. a Peck? motion on this? I, I, I was just going to see if anybody was uh, comfortable enough to offer one. Uh, I would move uh, that we uh, recommend that this be considered at the finance level, finance committee level, uh, with the suggestion going to the developers that they try to trim back their a request for city participation. I don't think it needs to come back to us for that. I think we can send it along uh, with that proviso that we would like uh, the finance committee to be able to look at a reduced level of city participation in the project. Fair enough, Mr. Gisler. So then we're not specifically acting on the on the term sheet as presented to us this evening, with because there are qual. There's qualifiers in your in your motion. Right. The qualifier would be, you know, that generally I think it's a handsome uh, building. It's a quality uh, structure uh, and one that we would like to see built there. Uh, but we would just like to have it. I don't know, Mr. Peckham, that uh, your proviso is really necessary because as it goes forward to finance, I mean, they will grapple with this, these issues anyways without our recommendation that they do so. Okay. Well, I would move to approve, and I would hope that uh, along the way uh, the <laughs> yeah. level of city participation could be trimmed. Yeah. Do I have a second? I have a second from Mr. Martins. So Mr. Gisler, the motion is to the term sheet then as I... Yes, as, that, as, right? as, that as proposed. Yeah. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Wait, aye. Uh, wait. Well, I'll vote, I'm voting no because I think there are some questions that still have to be answered and with those restrictions I'm voting, I will vote no on the term sheet. Okay, fair enough. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And one opposed? No. Okay. Thank you. Great. It'll come back to uh, to finance then. Great. So move on down to updates. Yeah, you won't need any of that. So quick updates. Um, we wanted to share uh, positive news about our Fix It Up Wausau program. As you recall, many moons ago, we created a special pot of money for um, major transformation, what we were calling like extreme makeover projects that have the potential within the city um, to, to take place. We have closed on two loans so far. Um, Michelle provided a, a great uh, overview of those loans, um, you know, the, the projects that will be coming in this spring. Uh, some work has already started, but they'll be ongoing um, as the weather breaks, and we're really excited to see two Fix It Up Wausau projects come to fruition this year, and we'll be sure to have a nice unveiling when they're, when they're complete. Any questions on that for us? Are there more in the pipeline? Uh, we do have a few in the pipeline, yeah. yeah. Great. So uh, the challenge, of course, is always getting contractor availability and getting it all put together. But yeah, we're glad to see these projects come to fruition and glad to see that project uh, or that program continue to, um, continue to grow. Uh, on the North Rear front, you'll recall that's the area at the Great Lakes Cheese location. We, we are in the process of, um, you know, proposals have been resubmitted to DPW for, um, you know, f uh, to select a new contractor to continue demolition. That's moving along, and we're working with our 
our planning firm to um, to revise a site a master site plan for that area so we hope to bring uh, that to council and to, to committees and to council in the coming um, days hopefully weeks um, quickly uh, as we, as those projects come together and see how the um, individual projects fit together within the broader site plan for the north her front area questions Excuse me, what happened with the first demolition outfit? Oh, Did they I, just fail to perform? Or? No, he passed away. Okay. So the main guy died? Yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, so on the Wassa Center Mall, just a quick update. The you know, as, as many know, the WAS organization has been interviewing firms uh, to undertake the planning process. Um, from our understanding, they have you know shortlisted uh, a group of firms um, to you know to finalize that and to uh, kick off that you know, master planning process. We uh, expect that 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 uh, to work closely with whatever firm is hired by the WAS organization and obviously they'll be looking to unite and unify the previous studies and market materials that we had done for them all um, including some of the previous work uh, by Archive DS which was done through our partnership with the WEDC and as well some of the recommendations from the tool design group that analyzed the streetscape and the urban design transportation features around the mall and the south riverfront plan and the towers plans which you know um, have highlighted um, you know housing opportunities and and the connections between the mall and those areas of the city so we're we'll um, we look forward to seeing that can't come soon enough, I'm sure everyone would agree. So um, on Shopco, we're aware uh, the, you know, the develop, uh, the uh, uh, owner is marketing the site, has been uh, proactive in marketing the property for redevelopment. We included in the packet the marketing flyer. Um, we are in the process of looking, uh, working with the, with the developer through the SISM committee to relocate 18th Avenue, which will, I think, really help um, kind of open up that area a little bit and kind of remove some of the confusing, um, you know, turns that are there at the moment um, and allow the redevelopment of the south side of 18th Avenue, which used to be kind of um, metal sheds and whatnot, into a much nicer commercial property. And then to um, just discuss our next meeting date, um, you know, assuming that we're able to issue uh, these items, um, which could be under the new kind of remote meeting provisions of the council um, on finance for March 23rd, we could have a meeting on March 31st if you would like to. Um, that's what we discussed last time. Um, there might be some additional um, you know, kind of additional clarification or information that would be worthy to share. Um, what's your pleasure? Well, with, with uh, Alder Rasmussen not here, I don't know if we want to set a date. Uh, why not just canvas the committee okay. uh, email? We'll do and, that. Uh, it may be the 31st, or we can, um, or we can postpone longer. And okay. we can also play it a little by ear to see what comes in. OK. OK. Uh, I just want to uh, let everybody know that uh, out in the, the, the uh, lobby there is a hand sanitizer station there for anybody who might want to you know wash up on the way out uh, or of course the bathrooms across the hallway are also available with you know warm water and and soap so uh, please make yourselves at home with that I would entertain a motion to adjourn What's that? oh I'm sorry yes we did have the addendum we have an addendum yes Why am I not seeing it? That was the, um, the commercial loan deferment. Right. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. So we've okay. um, we've discussed uh, the administration has been uh, discussing ways to assist businesses, uh, especially at this difficult time um, with the um, you know, with the the current situation. So in working, um, you know, staff has worked closely with the mayor's office to come up with 
some provisions or ideas about how we could, as a city, make an effort to assist especially small businesses facing challenges during uh, this, this period. Um, so from our perspective, we w would recommend perhaps the opportunity to defer um, you know, city loans on projects uh, for a period of time uh, to, to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis as this plays out. Um, and you know, we, we do have under certain loan programs like our commercial rehab loan program and other programs that are administered in-house um, taken the, you know, work with small businesses all the time to put together um, either, you know, payment plans or other issues to address any concerns they have about making payments, but we, um, but we don't necessarily have the, you know, kind of uh, statutory ability to defer loans across all of our portfolios. For example, like, a, a, you know, some businesses have a TIF loan, which would be, you know, from a different pot of money, and that would be, would need kind of council approval to defer that loan. Um, Wausau World Market, for example, has a, has a loan that's funded from the TIF district. So, you know, we'd want to treat them fairly and um, uh, comprehensively um, and be able to grant deferments, um, you know, of, of loan payments um, during a time, you know, during this, uh, during this key time. So I wanted to throw that out there for your thoughts and comments. Okay, That's I still good. don't see uh, anywhere an addendum. I'm, I'm on Good Reader, and it's, it's not out there. Oh, why? Um, yeah, I apologize for that. It is on the website. It's on the website. It is. Yeah. It was on Good Reader, but I think it came in later. Oh. I had to. The only way I got I it apologize. was to update today, resync. I synced yeah. at the beginning of the meeting. Yeah. I uh, again, I apologize, okay. but just to reference, you know, the um, it is out there. We we did add the addendum, obviously, given the fast pace um, of of things happening uh, within the community. And you know, we are concerned about, uh, obviously there's many efforts locally to help small businesses, but we feel that um, you know, kind of by allowing uh, or by approving, allowing staff the ability, staff in the administration the ability to defer loan payment on city loans um, you know, impacted by the issue would be, um, you know, would, is, is wholly appropriate. And obviously we're not going to do it for longer than necessary, but we'd like the flexibility to do that um, because there's been so many, um, so many kind of changes about how long this, this will, will continue to bite, so. So these deferments, they wouldn't have to come to the committee then, is, unless it was um, TID financed? No, it wouldn't. With this, with this we're saying you'd uh, empower staff to do that, staff in the administration on all city loans we would defer all of them for a period of time. Uh, defer payments, again, interest would continue to accrue, um, but you would defer, you know, defer payments. You wouldn't need to make a payment uh, during this key time for as long as necessary. Okay. Would this, um, then would they have to, um, they'd have to apply during this, during the declared state of emergency, I would assume, or? Sure. Um, I guess we're not defining when they would apply a request, but we've received, we already are aware of some firms that will have obviously challenges, so we'd like to be able to respond to them and say yes, we can approve a de deferral during, you know, during a period of time. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want to see going down, you know, six, twelve months down the road, and and somebody's looking for a deferment, and they it's and they say, well, it was because you know things hit the fan a year ago, and um, they're looking looking for a deferment. Um, but then again, I'd, 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 I'd want to see um, the balance at any opportunity for a business to have the ability to keep moving and, and growing, um, even when, you know, when, when, they're, when they're cash flow starved, because it doesn't do us any good to let them default. So Correct. And like I said, we routinely do work with, with firms already to you know, put together payment plans and deferrals on some of the programs that don't require council approval. But what we'd like to do is ensure that we can do that with any loan from any pot of money, you know, so that we can work with all businesses that receive city incentives or city loans um, to, again, defer those loans during this period of time. If you'd like to uh, amend it to just or just and make the motion to say that they need to request it during the 
um, you know, during the emergency, that's fine. Although, you know, I guess there could be some debate. Well, even after the emergency, as they're coming back, um, you know, coming back online, there, you know, there might be cause for, you know, for a reasonable deferment, you know, especially if they're refinancing or doing other things too to try to recover from the disaster. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly it's a priority for them, you know. Uh, things that, to get back to normal, I, I think it'd be fine to empower staff and the administration to uh, to manage this, you know, for the interim, and uh, and, and report back to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we'd be glad to. Yeah. Uh, Pat. Yeah, just wondering uh, if we could put some sort of lid on uh, the as long as necessary part. Uh, I'm imagining for a hospitality business if. Uh, that business were to be closed for two months, uh, they're not going to need a, de a deferral just for those two months. They're going to need it for yes a while. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe we should say uh, for up to a year or... Yeah, that's fine. We're fine. Whatever guidance you'd like. A year is, mm -hmm. we can work with that. And obviously if we have exceptions to that rule, um, we would come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you Is need a motion to approve? Motion? Yeah, I would, that'd be great. Uh, move yes. to approve um, that the uh, staff be authorized uh, to do this on a case-by-case -case basis uh, for up to uh, one year from today. Great. And we'll and we'll phrase this in a resolution, which will go to council. Okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Second. I have a second for Mr. Gisselman. Further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. That completes our agenda. I welcome a, an adjournment motion, please. I have a motion from Martins. I have a second from Peckham. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.